Today we create a slicing logo reveal in After Effects. Hey guys, what's up? This is Nikhil from Dopemotions.com. <laughs> that was lame. Hey guys, what's up? This is Nikhil from Dopemotions.com and welcome to this brand new After Effects tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to create this really simple but really interesting logo reveal in After Effects. So without wasting any more time, let's get straight into the video and get started. Alright, so here we are in After Effects. So let's start by creating a new composition. This is going to be our main comp. So I'm going to just rename this to main. 1920 1080 30 frames 10 seconds and hit ok so the first thing that i'm gonna want to do is create a new composition again and this is gonna be 500 by 500 this is gonna be kind of a logo composition so let's name this logo and hit ok and then we can drag in your logo here i have a sample logo so which which i'm gonna use actually so I'm just going to set this to 60% maybe, something like that and I'm going to add an ellipse so just double click on it and it's going to add an ellipse. Just change it to whatever color that you want to go with, maybe I'll go with kind of a darker red, something like that, I don't need any stroke so just set this to zero, there we go. Let's go back into our main composition and drag in our logo composition, there we have it. I think that's a bit too big so maybe I'll just scale this down a bit this thing to around 90% and this to 50% yeah that looks be good then I, I want to create you know before creating the slicing animation I want to create some guides for our logo so to create that what I'm gonna do is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit ctrl R to bring down the rulers and just drag in these guides just at the borders or the corners of the circle oh, circle don't have a corner it's the borders of the circle so just like that let's hit ctrl r to get rid of them and we can just go ahead and lock the guides then what i can do is select the rectangle tool we don't need the fill right now so i'm just gonna set this to none hit ok and increase the stroke to somewhere around 50 pixels maybe select the rectangle tool and just create a square like so you can see and then i'm just gonna scale this down a bit just like that and increase the stroke a bit and I'm trying to, you know, crop these corners of the circle right away. So we need to play around with the stroke size and the scaling properties of the stroke. So I'm going to increase it a bit more. Just like that. Maybe let's go with an 85. That should work pretty good. I think it's just too much. Maybe 82. 82. Or oh, let's go with 80. Yep, that looks good and let's set this to 85 yeah that looks perfect and this is going to be our guide layer so just rename this to guide right click and create this as a guide layer and now what i can do is i can get rid of the guidelines we just need to use the square as our guide so what i'm going to do is I'm hit t and bring down the opacity a bit low to around 80 percent and then we can just lock this up then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my logo and create a mask so I'm gonna select my mask tool this is a rectangle tool and create some mask now you can see it's not aligned in the center so just pretty quickly I'll align it select this align it in the center let's just like so and just like that now let's check it out yep that is properly aligned up then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the logo layer and create mask according to our square guide. So maybe I'll drag it right over there just like that. Then 
one from here just like that one from here just try to be as precise as you can I'm very bad at being precise so yep somehow I did it so now we have four masks as you can see and it's fine if it's just a little bit visible it's just fine then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna animate the mask so to animate it what I'm gonna do is go to around 15 frames maybe or let's go to 20 frames select the mask one bring down the properties click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe go back in time just hide the guys we don't need to see it anymore see it anymore it make sure the mask one is selected and hit ctrl T so we can see the transform properties and just drag this out like that I think I did it wrong we need to do the exact opposite let's move it just like that so now we have something like that and just drag it in the opposite direction so maybe I'll just delete it Let, let's start from beginning actually let's hit ctrl Z and I'm gonna start from the scratch again so here we have ready with the mask so once our mask is ready, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this mask to subtract. So now we have something like that. Then let's go to 20 frames forward in time. Select this mask and hit Control. First of all, create a keyframe. Go back in time. Hit Control T. All right, and just bring this up like that. Just drag this just like that so now we have something like this you see and the same thing I'm gonna do with all the full mask so to do that just go to just go 20 frames ahead in time create a keyframe come back to right over there hit ctrl T to bring up the transform properties and just drag it just like that so now we have something like that really simple go 20 frames forward in time create a mask path go back in time hit ctrl T to bring up the transform properties and just drag in like drag it out like that there we go and the same with the fourth one as well bring this keyframe right over here go back in time hit ctrl T select it and hit ctrl T just drag it up like that so now select this hit U so we can see the keyframes now we have something like that really simple and easy to create now it's a bit too slow so let's make it a bit faster and I'm gonna start the animation I'm gonna start this animation from one second so select all the keyframes just drag it right over here go right over there hold alt and just drag it just like that and I think this speed should work pretty good yep that is looking pretty good but a bit lame so let's go into graph editor first of all hit f9 to easy ease them go to graph editor so i'm gonna select this keyframes and create kind of a peak just like that for every keyframe it doesn't really need to be perfect but somewhat close to perfect so like that oh I messed up a little bit right over there just like that and turn on the motion blur let's see yep that is looking pretty good I think the animation is looking a bit faster so maybe select all the keyframes hold alt and just drag it just like that let's see now yep this is looking pretty good Let's animate the bouncing, the bounce kind of an effect of the circle. So I'm, I'm gonna go right over there at one second. Select the logo, hit S to bring down the scale properties. Click on the stopwatch to create a keyframe. Go right over here to maybe around 10 frames. Set this to zero. Select the keyframes, hit F9, go to graph editor, go to value graph, and create a curve which looks something like this. That is looking pretty good. But I want to create a kind of a bouncing animation, kind of a pop-up look. So what I can do is I can hold Alt and just 
I can hold control and just click right over there to create a keyframe. Just drag it just like that. So now we have a little bit of bounce as you can see. Yep, that is looking pretty good. And it's really simple to create nothing really difficult as you can see. Let's create those lines that animate with the slice that give that slicing kind of an animation or feel to it. So to create that, it's pretty simple. Let's go and first of all turn on our guides. Select the pen tool and I'm going to create a shape which is going to be maybe around 5 pixels stroke of 5 pixels. And maybe I'll start it from right over there. Hold shift and just click just like that. Hide the guide. So now we have a line just like that go into content shape one and stroke and change this from butt cap to rounded cap so we have curved kind of a points right away here and just rename this to line pretty quick go right over there add and add a trim path then we can animate the animation just like that so it's pretty simple let's go to around one second set this to zero just like that select the logo so we can see the keyframes hit use to see the keyframes and then i can go to right over here bring this up to 100 maybe i'll just set this to zero just go right over here and make sure you're right over here put a keyframe on the start go right over there set this to 100 so now we have something like that. You see, select them, hit F9 to ease them. Go to graph editor, go to speed graph and create kind of a peak that we created just like before. There we go. You see, it looks really, really cool. Turn on the motion blur and increase the coolness. Let's see how it looks. Yep, that is looking pretty perfect, but it's a bit too early, so I'm just gonna delay it a bit. Just like that. Yep, that is looking pretty good. Let's crop this up by holding Alt and close bracket to crop it up. Then I just need to duplicate it. So I'm just going to hit Ctrl D to duplicate it, hit U so we can see the keyframe and place it just like right over here. Make sure the anchor point is right in the center and hit R to bring down the rotation properties and rotate it by 90 degrees. There we go. And just position it by holding Shift and just drag it just like that. But it's not in the position so I'm going to turn on the guides just to be a bit more precise. Let's change the color of the guide so we can see it more properly. Maybe something like a blue. Select line 2 and just drag it right over here. Then create a duplicate. Drag it right over there. Maybe somewhere around there. Rotate it by 180 degrees. Select it and just drag it just like so and one more for the fourth slice Hit R. just make this 270 select it and set it on the position let's hide our guide and let's see what we have Yep, that is looking actually pretty cool. Okay, and just close up everything and let's see our complete animation. Yep, that is looking pretty good actually. And lastly, what you can do is you can also animate the logo. So what I can do is I can just cut the logo right away there from hitting by hitting Control X to cut it up. And hit Ctrl V to paste it. Just align it in the center. 
then I'm gonna select the logo hit ctrl D and this is gonna be our mat for the logo and the reason I'm creating that is I'm gonna let you guys know in a second so let's drag it right over there below our logo main logo that is the sample logo and set the track mat just click right over here alpha mat and then what I can do is I can go right over there select the logo hit P to bring down the position properties create a keyframe hit R to bring down the rotation properties create a keyframe hit U to bring down both the properties select the properties select the keyframes drag it just like that and then I'm gonna select this drag it up and rotate it at minus 45 degrees so now we have something like that as you can see select keyframes hit f9 to ease them go to graph editor and just drag it just like that so we have something like that looks pretty cool turn on the motion blur and increase the coolness that is looking really nice then let's create a background pretty quick by hitting ctrl y let's rename this to bg for background hit ok and add a four color gradient there we go just drag it below change this to something like a dark pink that is for our logo background and change this to something like a black increase the jitter to 20 percent so we don't get those color bendings just place it right over there something like that and something like that let's move it just like that maybe a bit more just a little touch and that is looking pretty good actually I'm gonna change it, make it more darker kind of a darker black ah uh, that's not looking good maybe a bit yep, actually that is fine let's create a reflection to make it look more interesting and to do that I'm gonna duplicate the logo hit ctrl D rename this to ref or reflection and uh, what I can do is actually I can select this and add a four color gradient or let's add a gradient ramp to it so I'm gonna add a gradient ramp there we go and add the same color so let's select this turn this on and select the color and close this up oh, not this one the reference one select the same color and make it make this color a bit lighter something like that make this a bit darker something like something like right over there a little bit but looks pretty good hit ctrl c to copy it and paste it on the reference as well and then what i can do is i can select this and create a mask on it so i'm gonna create a ellipse so let's select the ellipse tool and create kind of a circle just like that you can see and set the mode to intersect all right and then what I can do is I can select the gradient ramp and just move it just like that. Make it a bit more lighter, like that. And it's gonna work kind of a reflection as you can see, but it makes it look really, really nice and natural kind of thing. So instead of you know feathering it out, I can just move the ramp or manipulate the ramp a little bit and create a really good look. There we go, looks pretty good. And there we have it, I think. Looks pretty cool. The ramp is not proper actually, as you can see. So let's fix this up. Select it, just drag it. You can hide the mask so we don't confuse. Something like that. Yup, that looks pretty good and i think we are done as you can see really simple and easy to create but really interesting and i hope it helps so yep that is a wrap for today i hope this video was helpful to you guys and if it was don't forget to subscribe comment and like and i'll see you in my next video till then take care thank you so much for watching guys don't forget to stay raw stay creative